where was I? So starting 2015, we added the um, programs in advance dashboard and uh, sorry. I can't, I can't handle these. <laughs> um, and you can see the the growth in in use of the PE dashboard over time. Um, it is an incredibly powerful tool. There's the basic things that you can do if you just join in are somewhat limited. There's a lot more things that can be switched on depending on your needs. And our goal today is to try and introduce you to some of these features and um, help you with those things. In addition, if you have questions about uh, our dashboard, nobody knows that better than us either, well, <laughs> except Sage. Yeah, so I, I guess I would say, so Sage Ross is our chief technology officer at um, the Wiki Education Foundation. He is the one who built the dashboard. And you've got two people up here who use it a lot on a daily basis. Um, but every once in a while, I will get a technical question, and I want to just be super clear up front. I am not a technical person and do not know the answers to the technical questions. So, uh, but I'm happy to put you in touch with Sage to answer those if you have a specific technical question. Um, so let me talk about uh, the, the organization of the program and events dashboard. So there are campaigns, and then there are individual programs, events, courses, things like that under a campaign. And so if you are interested in getting started and having your edit-a-thons or other activities that you're doing, um, any contests that you're doing, anything like that tracked on the program and events dashboard, you want to start by creating a campaign. And each program can live in multiple campaigns. So you don't need to feel like you create just one campaign and everything lives in there. So you could create a campaign for your user group in a particular year. You could create a campaign for your user groups edit-a-thons themed around a particular topic in a particular year. And then you can put the individual programs into multiple campaigns. So to create a campaign, you scroll down to part of the challenge I will also say about the program and events dashboard is because it's so widely used across the movement. You have all kinds of different um, including in different languages. It looks like in this case, most of these are in English um, starting out, but um, all the different user groups, all the different groups broadly um, defined across the international Wikimedia movement are using this software to track their events. So you will see things in different, um, in different languages. But if you scroll down here and click this create a new campaign, you can title it. So my user groups 2024 edit-a-thons for example, and then you can choose whether you want to have a passcode or not. So this is a, do you want to allow other people to add their programs into your campaign or not? So that if you're doing a broad campaign that you're trying to get lots of people engaged in who might be creating their own programs, you might want to leave it without a passcode. If you're worried that somebody might put their weird campaign in yours or their weird program in yours, then you might want a passcode, whatever you want to do. You can do start and end date, so this will track the activity from a particular start and end date. So if you're looking for just 2024, you might want to put that in. I'm not going to bother for this case. And then you type in a description of you know, what you're doing with this particular campaign. Now, there's a couple of different course types in here, and I'll talk about these in a minute. Um, will I, or is that you? I You're, okay, so um, so I would recommend in this case edit-a-thon because this is my edit-a-thon um, as a default course type. So I'm going to create my campaign here. So this is now a test campaign that exists, my user groups 2024 edit-a-thons that exists on the programs and events dashboard, right? And if you want to then create programs, so this would be an individual event that you're doing, a course that you're doing through your education program, a contest that you're running, whichever kind of programmatic activity you want to be tracking underneath this campaign. So this is where if you've got multiple different events, you create a new program for each single one of them, and they will all be tracked up in this campaign. And so you click 
click this create program button. And if you have used the dashboard in the past, they will give you an option to clone something that you have done before. So if you have a particular edit-a-thon that you run over and over again, and you've built out a lot of good materials that you wanna just copy over from the last one, you can clone your previous one, or if you're starting brand new or you're doing a different type of editing activity, you can create a new program. So I'm gonna create a new program. Um, there's three kind of basic types. Um, and so the idea of the dashboard is it's anchored around a set of users and you are tracking their activity across all language making media projects and, um, and in the article namespace essentially of those projects. And so you can create a basic program which just tracks any activity. Um, you can create an edit-a-thon, and the difference between these two is some language Wikipedias have automatic um, edits enabled for that language, which has been built for like Czech Wikipedia and a few others. Um, that's probably not relevant for this particular group, but often if you're working in international context, this does actually matter. Um, or an article scope program, which Ian will talk a little bit about in the future. Um, but what an article scope program does is it allows you to set a specific list of articles, and then it only tracks the edits that people are making to that group of articles. So this can be really helpful if you have an edit-a-thon that has a lot of power users of Wikipedia who come to it, who do some editing on your topic area, but also go in and fight some vandalism and do some other things while they're sitting there and then something pops up on their watch list and then they go and edit like three other things and then those aren't related at all to your edit-a-thon and you don't want them in your statistics. This enables you to create just a, I only want to track the um, this particular set of articles. And there's some ways to toggle that individually as well. Um, but I'm going to choose edit-a-thon in this case. I'm going to choose a program title of test, test. This is probably not going to work because I need to uh, make this unique from all my previous tests. Um, you, yes. Jenna, so what are the automatic wiki edits that you mentioned? Yeah, so so some language Wikipedias like to be able to create like user boxes on individual users' home pages or user pages for their edits or say that they are part of this course or something like that. And so they will automatically, if you have that enabled in certain language Wikipedias, the dashboard will then go when somebody logs in and joins a course, will go put a user box that they were part of this particular program on, um, on their homepage. So that is on for, I think, do I have a list of which languages that's on for? I don't think I do. It's on for, um, it's on for Portuguese taste. Yeah, so yeah. that actually might be helpful. Yeah, it's on Portuguese, Czech, and English are the, um, the three languages, but it's not automatic. You have to set it up. So, yeah. I just wanted to clarify uh, the basic program will uh, create notifications for any of the edits that the participants make or edits on any of the pages that the participants make. So anything that, so a basic program will track any activity in the article namespace of Wikipedia. So they, it won't track what they're doing on talk pages or if they're working in draft space. I mean, it sort of will, but it won't bring those up into the big um, edits at the top, the overall statistics. Um, and then the article scope one will only track their edits to a predefined set of articles. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so you choose a home wiki for your campaign. So probably for most of us in here, this is English Wikipedia. You can also choose Portuguese Wikipedia or Spanish Wikipedia if you want that to be sort of the home wiki that um, that people would be creating accounts on or things like that of what you're setting. And then if you want to track any other language Wikipedias or activity, if you want to do some work on Wikibooks or you're having some participants do some Wikidata stuff or maybe you know, they're doing anything else on another project, you can put other ones in here. So let's say, in this case, we want Spanish Wikipedia too. So you just type in here and they will pull up anything um, that you wanna do. So you could type as many different projects as you want in here and it will track any activity that happens across all 300 and some language Wikipedias and, you know, 200 and some language wiki books and Wiktionary and et cetera, et cetera. So you can type in as many as you want. Um, so you type in what this is. This is an edit-a-thon. And then 
There is a checkbox here for a private program. And so what this enables you to do, this isn't something that we built specifically at the request of a lot of the LGBTQ edit-a-thons, where participation in that edit-a-thon can be um, a challenge for your personal safety in many countries around the world. And so we built this private program box that you can check, which makes your edit-a-thon and your list of who was there only visible to the, the event organizer and then the admins of the program and events dashboard. And it's not visible to um, just anyone on the internet. Um, otherwise, if you don't check this box, anyone will be able to see the list of usernames of the people who participated in your event. So if you have some any, any concerns around um, personal safety or the idea of a people's usernames appearing in a public place that they attended this event, you want to check this private box. Uh, for this case, I don't particularly care for my little test one here. Um, so then this gives you an opportunity to start the event tracking and end the event tracking. So this can be really helpful when you have a group of um, editors who do a lot of stuff outside of your individual edit-a-thon so that you can pick the particular day that you want to start. And then let's say we're going to track all the way through February in this case, and we're going to start tracking at 6 a.m. and we're going to end at one o'clock. And then this can be if you have specific times that the um, the program that you want to specify for the activity. Um, so this would be if you're trying to sort of set an event time for an edit-a-thon to let participants know when it is. This is different from sort of when you're tracking the actual edits that they're making. You can set a different one here, and I'm not going to worry about that at this point. Okay, so that creates um, my uh, my editor, my uh, program here. So this is a program that you can then have people enroll. The easiest thing you can do is there is this um, enrollment link. And if they visit this while they're logged into the dashboard, they will automatically be edited to add it to your list of editors. Um, you can also manually add them. So if you go into the editors tab here, um, you can click this add and remove editors button. And what this allows you to do is just type in usernames. Um, I'm gonna type in Ian's here. He didn't know this, but yeah. let me make sure I can spell this. Yes, no. did I get it right? No. no. Uh, uh, I added an extra D yeah. and an extra A, and I can't type on this computer. Ah, what is wrong with me? There we go. Okay, so I'm going to add Ian here. And so then I can see he hasn't edited recently, um, or at least hasn't edited today, because I guess I set the start date of today. Um, so yeah, so you can see then he has appeared here. Maybe I should actually go back in so that we can actually see that. When did you last edit? Yeah, this is yesterday. yesterday. Okay, so great. I'm going to move the start date of this back. Okay, it just hasn't updated. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So it should update soon. Um, oh yeah. That's well, that's the dashboard's a little backed up. So it probably won't actually update today. That's good. Great times. Um, okay. So, um, so yeah, so you can add then editors manually. So if you have a list of editor, you can also backfill this from a past edit-a-thon that you've done or a past event that you've done. If you've collected usernames of people, you can go in there and add them and it'll pull the statistics from that. Or the easiest thing you can do is um, on this homepage, um, I need to move this out of the way so I can dismiss this box. Hopefully I won't destroy this in there. Um, you will be able to see that sort of enrollment link and you can send that to participants or put it up on the screen so, of your edit-a-thon. And then if they click on that, um, then they can just automatically be logged in um, to the dashboard. Um, yeah. Um, so there's a couple of other things here. Um, you can have, um, if you click on this edit button, you will get a few additional um, options here. So if you decide you wanna change your type of your program, you can edit that here. You can switch it to be private. And if you're doing a um, education program or something that has multiple weeks, you can also enable something called a timeline. So I'm gonna enable that here. 
Um, was that what I was, I was supposed to, yes, turning on the timeline. Okay. So yeah, if you enable a timeline that allows you to, a lot more flexibility, it gives you another tab and gives you a sort of week by week breakdown. So if you're running a sort of multi-week workshop or an education program, um, this can be really helpful to give you um, the ability to show people um, what they need to do over time. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Can you go yes. Ahead? So how, how does this work? Do you determine the, the intervals or not? No, you could, we'll, we'll show that later of how to edit the timeline. This just turns the timeline on or off. So of, if you have it, no, the timeline tab won't show up on the dashboard at all for participants. If you turn it on, then it will show up for participants. And I'll show you, I'll leave it on right now. And then we can show you how to actually edit it um, in a little bit. Um, online volunteers, this is if you have other um, experienced Wikipedians who are joining to help your event, they will, you can add them in and then that just has their username there as a help person that people can reach out to, but they can't see any advanced data about the participants or real names or anything like that. That's just a opportunity for you to put people in whose usernames you want to have available so that they can see those. Um, and then I think that is everything I needed to do here for this one. Okay. All right. Now Ian will walk us through the next steps. <laughs> okay. So now this timeline has appeared and it says nothing. So what you got, what you have to do here, um, there are a couple of things, a couple of options here. One is to add a week. That's where we want to start. So week one, it, automatically add some weeks at, for the the whole thing uh because this was extremely long and yeah it's a little odd but once you've got this now you can add um you can edit the weeks uh where did the i don't know you click arrange timeline oh okay. yeah it's um they are all I don't know why I don't think there's oh okay this is edit project is yeah sorry um this is what going what is that wrong this is always the challenge of live demos this is gone <laughs> this is doing something very weird. Okay, scroll down. Oh, we need to set which when it needs. Okay. Yeah. So uh, click. No, no that's all it is. Uh, and I'm click um, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Just set it. To university. Yeah. And then click done. That should fix it. Yeah. Now you can click arrange timeline. Um. Okay, let's say well. Let me try it. Oh, add block right here. Oh, um, so now that we've uh, troubleshot all that, let's start it over. Um, so what we did there, we had to uh, go down to the bottom here and edit the project dates because it wants to know what days of the week this thing is going on. And um, you can say whether you have class holidays or not, what days you meet. Save that. What? Sorry? Oh, no, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm sorry. I was okay. just talking out loud to yeah. myself. I'm sorry. And once you, then you can arrange timeline. You need to add blocks first. Well, save it all first. And then you have the option to add blocks. Now, this is where the magic is. And also, this is where you probably, if you forget, get in touch with us, shoot us an email. Um, so the block types here, we have, oh, the block title, so, sorry, what, so. Never claimed to be able to type. <laughs> and here's where you can add training modules. Now, training modules are 
especially for um, when you're working with new editors or people who aren't familiar with this area, you can add keep events safe. That might be worth even for people with some experience. And um, so this might, uh, dealing with harassment. And so that might be the, the good- Editing basics. Editing basics. So once you do this, you can add some, just add some text here, tell people what you want to see. I said I can't type, so I'm not going to try. And now we have week one, and we have these training modules. So when you go here, when they when people show up, or maybe tell them go the day before, and then there's these trainings, keeping events safe, you can go through these and um go through these week by week, I mean, slide by slide, introduce your participants to what's going on, what the, what, what the thing is, the work is, and, um, go back here. Now you can do this for, for several weeks. You can do this for like, okay, now I've got week one, now in week two, we are going to um, well, let's just add a block Maybe here. A block, yeah. And um, Save this and oh, it's in the wrong place. Can you move it? Or not? Yeah. So you go to arrange timeline and then you can pull it down. All right. We didn't put meetings in those weeks. So, but you can just move it up and yeah, down. Yeah. You can yeah. move it up and down so you can move it to the first here. Thank you. Just deleted it. <laughs> so follow. <laughs> Follow my lead when I'm in front of a group, so I'll always screw things up. Uh, just got changes. So yeah, we didn't put we didn't put meetings, meetings for in. week two. Yeah. So you realize you made that mistake because everybody's going to make mistakes. Go back here. We need a meeting in week two. So now we've got some meetings throughout. Now we can add a block for week two and say, Now this one has no trainings associated with it. You can just give instructions to your participants in this block. And maybe this is where we're editing live. Um, oh, the last important kind of thing I want to talk about is to add a resource block. And so here in block type, you can pick all kinds of things. And this is some resources. And once I've done this, now magically, we have this resources tab. And these are the trainings you've used, and um, you can also add other resources uh, based on your 
based on your timeline. Now, so the resources tab, once that pops up, this is a way for people to go back in the middle of the, uh, of the event or the course and say, oh yeah, let me find the training or oh, I've added a handout somewhere, let me find that. And it's really valuable because people do a training and then forget what they just read. Mm -hmm. And then when they want to come back, rather than have to go all the way through the timeline to find out where this training is, you go to the resources block and there it is. Show translating the training real quick. Yeah. Very high pollen today. <laughs> <laughs> um, all these trainings exist in a certain set of languages, but there are always more languages out there. There are always, you know, we hope that people keep working on expanding and um, translating these into other languages. So never click without explaining. There's a link down here that says wiki source. Oh, sorry, can you come back to the, where to find training in other languages? Yeah, that's what I'm. Oh, you're going to... Yeah. Okay. So here we go to click on the source and that will take you over here. Now you can, if you want to translate this into a language that doesn't yet exist in, they can see it exists in some, it doesn't exist in others. It's developed well in some, yeah. not in others. So let's say you go to a completely new thing. There's, it's all in English, <laughs> except the title. Um, so then you can use the translate function which will give you your basic outline in here in German. In German. That it's nothing's been translated. So this is the translate wiki interface, which if you know what you're doing in translate, you presumably know what you're doing in translate wiki. So I apparently don't know what I'm doing. So yeah, you can, there's the one thing that's been translated. And you can yeah. say it's good. But those of you who are familiar with Translate Wiki can use that interface to translate um, the training slides into any language. And they don't need to be approved by anyone then, it's just straight using Translate Wiki. So if you're interested in getting these into Spanish or Portuguese, or I'm picking those because I know there's those speakers in the room, but if you speak another language, you can also um, use the just regular translate wiki uh, to be able to get it translated. And then, you know, it's a machine translation that you work on improving it into something people can understand. Uh, obviously, if you're fluent in the language, you can just write it all, but depending, you know, yeah. writing a lot of words. And can be to show toggling this over to Hungarian and back on the training slide to show it in action. Um, oh, so can you have them in multiple languages? Yes, yeah. they go back over. So, this is the purpose one to so scroll up, and then you can see this. Oh, yeah, there, so there. switch it to my here. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is a great question. Um, I think the you can just type to this thing. There it is. Yeah. So then it immediately it'll give you the entire interface. So if you are speaking out of the language, that just toggles the interface of the dashboard, and so then it'll give you the anything that has been translated in that language will then be available. So, you know, the one of the limitations here is getting it translated into other languages, getting it built into something multilingual. Um, you speak a language, you can add it. If you don't, well, hopefully somebody else will. You can perhaps recruit somebody, get somebody's help, ask your friends, make friends. Okay, we've got like five minutes. So let's... Oh, really? Yeah.
Um, Show the alerts. Yes, the, um, what is that here? Uh, there. Nope. Nope. There, probably. Yes. So one of the really, so as you're doing this, your participants are editing. Um, <clears throat> stuff's happening. Maybe the articles are being nominated for deletion. Maybe something else is happening. How do you keep up with it? Well, there's an alerts tab, which will show up once once there are alerts for your class. It's and, on the campaign level. Just, yeah. So this so, is the Art and Feminism 2024 campaign we're demoing now. So we're gonna, showing this because this one actually has edits versus our test campaign that we've been using doesn't have edits. So we'll see it here because uh, there was a lot of activity for the Art and Feminism campaign. And, you know, you can, so somebody works on an article that has discretionary sanctions, you may want to either uh, point them away for it, from it, or you may just want to tell them, okay, you're working on an article with discretionary sanctions, make sure you're not edit warring, make sure you're working at the right standard. Um, somebody created an article, it's very common with editathons, create an article, it gets nominated for deletion. You can see that it's been nominated and perhaps it's a matter of somebody created an, uh, a bio with no sources, it's brand new, they plan to add sources soon, somebody very zealously <laughs> nominates <laughs> it for deletion two minutes after it's created. You can keep track of these here. And it's the alerts that really give you the power to um, go beyond the, the basics and really keep track of what your students are doing outside of just the the list of uh, edits and improvements articles and so on. Yeah, and there's a couple others beyond articles for deletion and discretionary sanctions. This, this bar where every time we move it, it moves into a different place that is not helpful. But yeah, if you want to track things like, um, and this is how we at Wiki Education are able to manage 14,000 new editors. Um, each year with just Ian and Brianda overseeing their work is because we have built all of these in. So if we see people editing afterwards, that's what the, after the activity, that's what continued course activity is. If somebody nominates their article for a good article, for example, we might want to jump in there and make sure that it's actually a reasonable uh, decision. Sometimes students get um, overly enthusiastic about the quality of their work and their self-assessment that is, is not really, uh, we don't necessarily agree with. So there's lots of different, um, if your users get blocked, things like that. So we have lots of these are all built on Wikipedia categories. And so if there's activity around those categories, um, then this generates an alert for us. So if you've got a campaign like this, Art and Feminism is a great example, especially if you're working on historically marginalized topic areas. This can be a really powerful way for you to monitor what's going on with um, with your users if they run into any troubles there. And then when you monitor, do they get a ping from their... I mean, they will get a ping through their normal user talk page, like yeah. if they're paying attention to it. But one of the challenges of event organizers, especially if you've got a large number of participants, like they may not be looking at their talk pages and you don't have any way of sort of seeing what's going on across a hundred people who are at an edit-a-thon. And this gives you the ability to watch what's happening for a hundred people at the edit-a-thon. And, and one of the things there's, you as an organizer might have a list of people who meet, you know, meet notability, but the participant uses a source that, that doesn't demonstrate notability, that's not a reliable source. And someone says, okay, here we've got a biography, it's only sourced to somebody's blog. You can come in then, you see this, and you can sub uh, replace some of the sources with better sources. Thanks. So, so this um, alert for article for the mission, does that only work for a campaign? Can you work on a specific activity within a campaign? Like it's for, in a it's yeah it's for it works at the campaign level so if you only want to look at articles for deletion for or any of the other alerts for a certain subset um you should just create a new campaign and put the programs that you're interested in doing that into wow. into that subset 
So um, we're running out of time here. Um, so I'm gonna breeze through the statistics bit of this. Um, so there's obviously the statistics you can see up here, um, the article views, the references added, the words added, the number of editors, the articles edited, articles created. You also get this box of Wikidata statistics. If any of your participants were working on Wikidata, you get a bunch of advanced statistics about your Wikidata one. But what I also want to show you is I'm on the alerts tab, but if you're over on the home tab, and we are in Hungarian, so I, which I do not uh, speak. So I'm going to switch it back over to English, which is the language I do speak. And you can go, well, no, oh, it's in programs. It's not in programs. Well, no, this is fun. The download stats button. Oh, okay, here it is. Okay, I just, this box is moving around and, and then uh, move it over there. Okay, so if you click this download stats button, what it will give you at the campaign level is some advanced CSVs. So this gives you sort of basic metric. You can see each page tracked. So you can see like edits, things like that. You can get a list of enrolled people. You can get editor usernames. You can get instructors or facilitators, a detailed breakdown of wiki data activity. And so any of these things, if you're looking for advanced statistics or you're trying to have this interface with other projects or you want to do something else, you can always download a lot of advanced data about the classes that are in each of your campaigns through that download um, campaign button. So I'll start. that's okay. okay that so, so that is can be a really powerful way for you to get other metrics about people. Um, let me also show um the authorship highlighting tool so if you click on the articles tab so that's what i just did um and in um a particular okay i'm gonna this looks like it's an english wikipedia one um so you can pick in the different in an individual program level so for your particular event if you click on the articles tab and there's these assessment tools this will show you the cumulative changes but there's also a um assessment tool here that looks like most of these are new articles so this will not be particularly exciting but whatever i'll click on one anyways so this is clearly a biography and what it will do well this person <clears throat> created it and then didn't actually okay let's do this one instead but this is not in english so this does not work um I think none of these are in the English Wikipedia is actually the problem here, what I've learned quickly. Okay, let me pick a different one. And there's just a break between 11.45. Okay, yeah, people are welcome to stick around. Yes, thank you so much. Um, okay, this one is in Australia, except I think, so let's see if this works. They only do Wikidata. They only did with the data. Don't, don't have access here because these are your campaigns. No, everybody, no, everybody has, access. has access to all of these. Let me find one, sorry, in English here. Um, and let me look at what the other languages are and I can pick a different one. Okay, it works in Spanish. So let's do this in Spanish instead. Okay, hopefully this works. Yes, here we go. Okay, so this is gives you authorship highlighting. So this shows you exactly what the editor did. So it will bring it in. It'll bring the Wikipedia text of the Wikipedia article in. It'll show you um, Freddie Eduardo here is the one who worked on this. And it looks like Freddie wrote the entire article. Um, so you can see everything highlighted in a different color. This can be, if there is one, let me see if there's one that's not a new article that was created, but was an existing article, because that can be more interesting. Okay, here's Pilar. Okay, so this is also a really great example. So you can see this is a existing article. So you can see there was some text that still existed. The white stuff is was done by people not in the course, but you can see, the red is this particular editor, and then it looks like whatever Freddie did. It doesn't work with tables, so like apologies on that one. But it looks like whatever Freddie did is not actually showing here. Um, yeah, it's going to be a reference or something that for the table. It's not going to show. Um, so yeah, this will give you an example of sort of what people did. And this can be really helpful if you're working on existing articles, or especially if you've got multiple work people working on the same article, you can see what each individual editor did to that particular article. 
And this is available on like 13 different language Wikipedias, this authorship highlighting. Um, and if you have a question of which ones those are, please let, um, let me know. Um, I think we are, I'll just do a quick thing on updates. Um, so this is one of the most common questions about the dashboard um, is how often does the statistics update? And you may have tried to do an event and the dashboard crashed. This is a problem because so many people are tracking Wikidata programs that do a lot of edits and they've got participants in there using quick statements, which make a lot of edits very quickly and updating that can take a very long time. Um, so Sage is in the middle of a re-architecture project right now on the back end of the dashboard, which nothing you see here will change. But Sage has been working really hard on making sure that the dashboard is re-architected in order to actually handle the volume of Wikidata edits that are coming through the program and events dashboard. And so we're hoping that will fix its performance issues where it keeps crashing anytime anybody creates a big Wikidata program. Uh, and that will be finished hopefully by the end of this um, this calendar year. So um, we're also doing different kind of batch uploads on how we're, we're pulling the statistics. So typically, if you've got a short-term edit-a-thon, the priority will be for that, and it will update those statistics quickly. But if you're doing a longer-term program, especially one that includes a lot of Wikidata edits, it'll take a while for those statistics to actually update. Um, and if your program ever gets stuck, you can ping Sage either on the meta page for Program and Events Dashboard. There's a Telegram channel, and Sage also has office hours that he does quarterly. The next one is on October 16th, so I encourage you to, um, to show up to that one if you are particularly interested um, or you have individual questions um, for him. So I know we are at time now, and so... And we're past time now, um, so feel free to head out if you um, if you want to go into the break uh, session here. But we will also stick around, and um, if there's other things, questions you have, or things you want to see, we're happy to do that. Thanks. If you have a question, maybe the question for Steve: uh, When you run a program for a semester, uh huh. Even though you were fine, you don't stop the vignettes and you don't find it. Mm -hmm. Now, for researchers, we're very interested in comparing what topic the viewership, you know, yeah. to what topics attract the readers. But it really doesn't work. I mean, it works kind of, but if a student is very enthusiastic and he does an edit on the first day of class, yeah. of course, it would be very difficult for the student who did six months later. Yes. Somebody... So it would be great if the tool could be included to take that into account when you look at the number of edits. Okay, yeah, I think that's something to bring to Sage, right? I think we had designed it the way we did with the idea that we're tracking the impact students make, right? So it's less about like whether, you know, it's less about comparing student to student and more about looking at from the first edit that they made, what is the cumulative impact that they've had? How many people have seen the work that they've done from that first edit that they made to the yeah. page? So, but I totally understand you want to compare students to students. No, I don't want to compare students. I want to know which topic attracts readers. Ah, so okay. In the semester, I know like whatever trees got a lot of views, much more than yeah, bushes. yeah. But then, um. If the tree edit was done in the first day of class and the other one was done in the last, yeah. so what does it mean? Because we had six months of counting views yeah. and the other had a yeah. week. I mean, so, that might even just be easier to use Wikipedia's page view tool, like not the dashboard. If oh, there's a distinct the, set of articles you're interested in, just plug them in. I think you can do up to 10. Is that right? Yeah. In the page view tool. So you can do 10 and then you can compare the traffic and it's the same okay, set of time view. point of yeah. that. I was just going to say, in addition to the general page statistics, I, I'm not as familiar with this tool, but I think the impact visualizer may be a good use case for that. Yeah, so the impact visualizer is the new tool Sage has been working on um, mm -hmm. that we've rolled out. I'm not sure if it does a lot of page views, though. It's um, here. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. So I can show you um, the impact visualizer here. Let me, I always like this. Is, this is, um, this shows um, African-Americans of the Manhattan Project. So this was an area that Wiki Education did a lot of focus on. 
And so you can see particularly, it gives you a good visual of these are the articles on African-Americans in the Manhattan Project that were sort of created over time. And then these ones are the ones from our, you know, the, the light purple is what with the education's contributions to this was of like our students campaign. You can visually see sort of the impact of this. And we can see this as well in like women geologists. We've had a couple of classes that have really focused on that. You can see sort of this is the general community contribution of women geologists. Like this is the work that our students are doing. Um, or frogs, Rana, if you're Ian, who's an ecologist, you can see the same thing like this step. Yeah, so this shows just the volume of content that students add. Um, and then you can see the sort of tail of, you know, which this is what research shows as well, right? It's like once our students start editing in a topic area, that will attract other editors to come in and add more content to those topic areas too. So you can see frog species were highly underdeveloped until our students started working on them. And they're still underdeveloped, but uh, we've made a substantive contribution to Wikipedia's coverage of frog species. So yeah, that's the visualize, that's the impact visualizer tool. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Jean? You look great. Person, it's, um, anyone can use this, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, but we're sort of using. You need a Wikipedia account. That's well, yeah, you yeah. use OAuth to log into it. So if you're like preparing for, or you have a theme for a conference or something and you want to start, you know, gathering articles or you can. Yeah. Of, you can. So that yeah, the one of the things we didn't get to. Yeah. Oh, you, wanna, you can show here. Um, so if you switch, if you switch the type to an article scope program. Right. Um, you have the ability to. To use a, a mm -hmm. like a category oh. page pile ID, uh, a pet scan search, okay, or templates on Wikipedia. So you could use like uh, Wiki Project templates or something like that yeah. to create the set. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, I, can you have the manual? Too? Yeah. So you can click the add available article. So if you want to say. You know, I want to work on Indianapolis, yeah, et cetera, right? So you could just type in and frogs, and you know, so you could type whatever articles that you have here, and then those you put at them, and then they come there as available articles. So your participants come, can come in and then say, Yes, I want to work on this article. And so I logged in as the um, facilitator right now, so I can't show you the student view, but if you're logged in as a participant, then you get a list of available articles and you can collect, select, and then that assigns you that article that you're working on it. So that can be really helpful if you're doing an edit-a-thon where you want a set of sort of 10 or 15 articles that you want your participants to work on. You can pre-build that list here either manually or, as Ian was saying, like with a category on Wikipedia, a pet scan ID, or a page pile ID or a template from a wiki project. So, and that just automatically gathers anything in there, so. Um, and the, the student view, instead of the remove button, they have a select button. Select button, yeah. Cool, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sticking around.